Are we recording? We are recording. Okay, we are back. Guess who's back? We're back. <laughs> Drew Shame here, thatanxietyguy.com, joined once again by my good friend, Mr. Billy Wiz. Billy Cross. Yes. What's going on, Bill? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's good to be back. It's, how long has it been? It's been over a year, I think. Long last, overdue. It's possible that the last time we did this was a year. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, we did the 20 episodes in the 101 series, and we've yep. discussed, we've discussed, like, bringing something else to the front. So tell the people what we're going to do, man. Tell the people we're going to do today. Okay. So here's what we think we're going to do. Let me get to these stupid glasses. I'm going to put them on and off because I can't read without them. But anyway, so what we're going to do is uh, we're sort of going to just continue the 101 series, but we're going to do how do I, this will be our how do I series. So as opposed to just talking about concepts, which we talked a lot about in the last yes series, right? Um, we will talk about like the nuts and bolts of how to actually do things. How do I start driving? How do I learn to be home alone? How do I go back to work? How do I, we'll have a whole series of these. Yeah, and yeah. I, you know, I think we want people to suggest topics as we go. Yeah. So this one, we're going to cover the, how, how do I start driving again? It's a good topic. It's a, it's a, it's a to common, it. yeah, it's a common question, man. You see it pop up all the time. It is. So many people have, I, I had serious driving anxiety. So, yes. you know, it's like a topic that's near to dear in my heart, but near and dear to my heart. You never had that problem though. I've got, a, uh, do you want me to go with my point that I've been thinking I, about? I think let's start with your unique think, view on this. Mr. So Jones. it's a really strange one because I have had, I can picture like three major panic attacks that I've had driving. Okay. In the past, like coming up to a roundabout here in the UK, I was going on holiday, came up to a roundabout, full-blown panic, couldn't breathe. It was really sunny yeah. and the, the heat in the car was just making me. So I took a detour, pulled over, just sat there, rode it out. Like there was nothing I could do. I was a hundred miles from home. Yeah. So I had that panic attack and then I've had it in the past again. Why can I drive anywhere? That's my question to you. Like why? I've had a panic attack in a supermarket, freak me out. Don't want to go in a supermarket anymore. Right. But I've had several driving, yet, like last night I was sitting here, my daughter wanted to go to McDonald's, and I weren't feeling great, like I had a headache, the fuzzy head, all the normal crap. Yeah. But no hesitation to like, yeah, okay. To get in the car. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the car has kind of been like a safe zone for you. Yeah, even though I've panicked in it. But the same as the house, like I've panicked. My major panic attacks have always been either at home or in the car, but they're my fucking comfort zones, and I'm swearing. I'm That's sorry. All right. It's okay. It's it's all good here. This is not a fish. It's officially not a family friendly yes. podcast. We've decided that. Yeah, yeah. So I've just, I've just decided that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's it. You actually, that's true. You decided that. <laughs> um, very good. So that, my friend, is like the million dollar question. I do mm. not have a good answer for that, and no, we're not really sure about that. To be honest yeah, with it's you, so strange. So strange. like. You know, I think the other night when you were live streaming and Josh was on, your son was on, Mm -hmm. and, you know, I think you mentioned something about that. I I was sort of half listening at the time and you said, you know, how something about that. You wanted to ask about that. How come some people have panic attacks but never wind up? Oh, it was because he's had, he's had a couple of panic attacks. Yeah, but but no, no disorder. He's actually here in the US right now, even as we speak. No, no, he's he's leaving tomorrow night. Oh, okay. No, early hours of Monday. Okay, cool. But uh, yeah, so how come he, and there are literally millions and millions and millions of people in the Mm. world who have panic attacks and have Mm. had them, but it just doesn't develop into anything if they be, they're one off events. So what is the mechanism that made you have panic attacks in the car and you treat them as one off events, yet the car is a safe (laughs) zone for you? Uh, I I don't know. Is it just me? Comment in the description. I mean, comment in the description. I don't know what I'm talking about. Comment, comment below if you've had panic attacks doing certain things but now you there's no like attachment no disorder relating to it it's Wait. amazing it is amazing because it goes it does run counter to like everything we know about how we develop phobias yeah, yeah. but yeah. don't know i think what all it illustrates <laughs> is i don't know Thanks. the answer is don't know d-u-n-n-o <laughs> officially don't know um i think it just illustrates the fact that you know as much as we do know about behavioral sciences and cognitive sciences and psychology and things like that we, there's a lot we just don't know we still don't know mm. Mm-hmm. So who knows why that is? I wish I could answer it. It's really, really weird, man. But I can't. 
So I'll have to move on since I have nothing constructive to add to you. <laughs> well, that's blown it then. That, that is totally blown it. That was such an anticlimactic start to this. <laughs> we but should, we should have saved it to the end. <laughs> we're gonna, no, we're going we're gonna to start. Brought the house we're gonna, down. We're going to get stronger as we go. We're already like right, rocking, okay. I can tell. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> let's, let's talk about the process of like, and, and I, it's going to be so interesting because you never had this problem. We're talking about the process of getting back in the car. So I think, yeah, yeah. I know I see people that are, talk about this all the time. It's one of the most common problems, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, a panic disorder sets in and agoraphobia starts to set in. Getting back in the car is like hugely a huge obstacle for a lot of people. And, and I think a lot of it, for me, it was because that, uh, it was always that thing where I did, I did have a few panic attacks in the car and boom, it instantly turned into like, oh, I don't want to yeah, get yeah. back in the car again. And, and I think a lot of people feel the same. But generally speaking, if you've been in a situation where this stuff has got you to the point where you are not driving or like you're super reluctant to drive or you're white knuckling Mm -hmm. your way through some rides and you don't want to do it or you can only do it with a safe person. You know, it it all comes back to the same thing. And the same thing is like, you're just afraid of how you're going to feel like the car isn't the problem, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's how you're going to feel. So, you know, places that you are, have been had a hard time going to, was Mm -hmm. it really walking to the, you know, the town center? past the tennis courts and over that bridge in the red coat you know it, it wasn't the bridge right no no it was nothing it was in here right so it's it, it it's not the car that you're afraid of it's not the highway you're afraid yeah, of it's, it's the way it's you not. feel when you're in it or yeah. the way you think you're gonna feel usually bingo that's exactly it so mm-hmm. it's the way you feel you're and you're anticipating how you're gonna feel so and, and it manifests in a lot of different ways so you were talking the other day about driving on the motorway when we were talking, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, call it a highway or freeway, whatever. But some people I know have a heart to, they, they can kind of manage. Some people can't get in the car at all. Some mm-hmm. people can get in the car and go just about anywhere as long as they have someone with them. Mm-hmm. Some people can only do local roads right around their homes. Yeah. 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 Some people can do go pretty far, but never on the motorway or the freeway. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it comes in all different in forms, but it's always because you know, either you're afraid of how you're going to feel in the car and you're anticipating how yeah, you might yeah, feel. I guess. It's the escape thing, isn't it? You would think it's the escape, like, especially with yeah. the motorway. Cause once you're on a highway, a motorway, yes. like yeah. you've got to wait till the next junction. So that's the, as soon I, as you join. I could relate to that. Like in my very early days when I didn't even know what panic attacks were, yeah, you know, yeah. my fear was like, well, what if I'm between exits on the Long Island expressway, you know, mm-hmm. where, what help is there? Yeah, so yeah. I, I think it, we fall into two categories. One is, you just don't want to feel that way, right? Mm-hmm. No matter mm-hmm. what, help or otherwise. And the second thing is, what if I need help? Yeah. Um, and that's tough. And I've also seen a bunch of people, and, and this might get me a little bit, it's not, it's not a sexist thing, it just is. This, it's always women that say this. Women drivers. No, well, no, no, no. <laughs> that, was, that was that guy said that. <laughs> um, not me. No, a lot of women usually comment that they're always, what makes it worse is having their kids in the car. Because yeah. You know, many times, traditionally, whatever, maybe the women who are kind of ferrying the kids around and they're, they're mm-hmm. a little nervous about driving around with the kids in the car. They don't, yeah, yeah. They don't, either it makes them more anxious or they don't want the kids to see them in a panic or they're afraid for the safety if they lose. Yeah, control. yeah, I was going to say, there's, there's so many different aspects of it. It can be, yeah, like it's mad when you think about it. It's kind of crazy. So yeah. I, I think this, would, this is the way I think we should approach this. Like I could just talk for the next 15 minutes about how I, how I got over it. But I think the better way to do it is how about we talk about how you got – pick something from way back when, like go, on. like go into your local shop. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how you, how you rebuilt that because how you rebuilt walking to your local shop is exactly how you rebuild driving. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was just – it was a case of stepping out the door. I don't know whether I – I'm trying to think back because it was so many years ago. It was right? a while ago, yeah. Did the first time that I ever tried to do it, did I make it all the way to the shop? And I'm pretty sure that I did. I'm I pretty sure that... I don't remember if you did or you didn't, because there was a bunch of things, the, the post box, the local the post, shop. The post box was around. the big one. Was the post box was the bigger one? We can use that. That's fine. But I, but I really broke it down into, like because the, the post box was literally 200 yards down the road. Yeah. And I, I was so determined to do it, and I didn't care if it was going to take me all day. But I remember the first time I ever tried it, I did make it to the post box. But it yeah. weren't without like fear and the sensations and stuff, the dizziness. And yeah. it, it was worse on the way back, but I think that was because I'd reached the point and now it was like, got to rush, got to fly home. Yeah. You know, I, I'd reach the goal, rush home. Yeah. But it, was, it was just like in that breaking it down into such small steps. But I think I'd already been out. I'd already been out like 
before that it wasn't that it was fully housebound at that time right this was just another step that i needed to take because like driving i've never had a problem with driving it's the weirdest thing so i would drive anywhere yeah but the thing for me was being away like walking distances from the car yep that was the crazy thing for me well i think so we can relate that back so for you it was no problem getting in the car and driving wherever i did i I watched you drive very long distances it didn't matter (laughs) but if you had to get out of the car that was a problem but yeah yeah that's exactly the same thing as if you're having problem driving. You don't want to get in the car and, and, and drive away. You don't want to go into a place where you think you're going to be, you know, uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. yeah away, away from whatever from help or safety. Or safety. That's right, it. exactly. So the way, reason why I asked Bill asked you about, you know, walking to the post box and all that stuff is because it's exactly, in, in all of these, how do I? We're going to have the same themes. Yeah, we're always going to come back to it. The answer is always pretty much the same. How do I yeah, start yeah. driving again is exactly the same as how do I go for a walk around my neighborhood uh-huh. or the mailbox or whatever. So I think you start, it doesn't matter what your particular thing is. So if you're watching this, talk about this and you want to comment, which is always awesome. And by the way, we're going to put this video everywhere. It'll be on YouTube, Facebook, it'll be everywhere. We're going to put it on your YouTube because we're going, to get, Drew, we're going to get him to a thousand subscribers if it's the last thing we freaking do. <laughs> I, do. Yeah, I know. I never ask. So I was like nine something as of today. Uh, so yeah. close. So that's close. That magic do. thousand. Whatever. I appreciate it. So we'll put it on my YouTube channel. We'll put it on Facebook. We'll put it everywhere. So if you're commenting and you're watching, you're commenting, you've been waiting for this topic. And, and the question you want to ask is, but what do I do because I feel this in the car, that in the car, your specific driving thing? The answer mm-hmm is doesn't matter like it almost doesn't matter why you're not getting in the car yeah yeah yeah. it doesn't matter the answer is always the same so Mm -hmm. how do you start driving again slowly like you just i could tell you that i had to literally get to the point where the first thing i had to rebuild when it was when i was getting okay with being back in the car again was just the idea of getting myself ready and Mm -hmm. walking out the door onto the driveway, getting in the car, starting it and driving away. Like the, just the first 20 feet out of my driveway mattered, Mm -hmm. which I think you could probably relate to. It's almost the same, that same part of getting, getting out of the car and walking over the bridge at the town center Yeah, yeah. or walking to the post box. The first thing is the first thing you got to build. Like you have to be able to get prepared and walk out the door, get in the car and start moving that's it yeah because people are going to be at different stages so the thing that i always think of with you is trying putting your shoes on tying them up and being prepared to go and do it that's exactly right but there's people out there that can do that already and they can walk to the end of their drive so they know they know where they need to go right this process so that's right that's right so i think if you're starting from like you are terrified to get in the car under any circumstances Mm -hmm. and you're not doing it or you're barely doing it or you're just like running to the supermarket and running home because you don't want to do it you start with the preparation and yes, the, Billy is exactly right. I remember getting up in the morning, first thing, just, okay, just got to put my shoes on. I just got to do this. I have to do that yeah, slowly yeah. and deliberately getting myself ready, you know, without speeding up and rushing to get out the door, get in the car, start the car, drive away. What happened after that was almost irrelevant at first. Yeah, yeah. Just getting comfortable with the idea of knowing that I was going to get in the car and drive by myself, mm-hmm. getting in the car, starting it, driving away. So if that's where you are, you have to start there. Like you literally have to just practice that as often as you can. Get yourself prepared, get yourself in the car, start it, drive away. I don't care if you drive to the end of your street, turn around and come home. That's it. Go back in and take your coat off and then do it again and again and again and again until like, for me, I felt like I had to start from a place where like, if I start every single drive at like level eight panic, that's, Mm -hmm. that's, I'm doomed. So I, I got it to the point where just getting in the car and driving was was nothing then it was like oh yeah that i can easily do but now what happens that's what i said with mine so i did it till i got bored yes did did the post box war until it was just there was just nothing anymore and then you can build on that so you know if you're if you're okay getting in the car but your problem is driving on the highway or you know the motorway Mm -hmm. or driving on somebody in the group mentioned their their problems they've kind of pretty much got their whole town covered you know it's good yeah 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 but I remember who it was that said, you know, the issue was now getting onto the country roads, I guess, between one town and another mm-hmm. if you live in a rural area. And so depending on what your problem is, if it's just a distance thing, you don't care what kind of road it is. You just got to get further and further from your house. You just start going further and further from your house in tiny yeah, yeah. little increments. Mm-hmm. But if the problem is that you don't want to get on the highway or the motorway, you get on the highway or the motorway for one exit. And that's it. You know, that's the way you just do that again and again and again and again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The problem is country roads between towns. You just get on a country road and start. It doesn't matter if you can only do a quarter mile, but you do a quarter yeah. mile, you pull over, you sit there, you do it again, you do, mm-hmm. it, again, you do it again. So it's, there's no magic. I, th- <laughs> yeah, I, think. I was just going to say, it's, that's it. See ya.
Yeah, well, we're almost you know, we're almost done. <laughs> like, uh, so uh, I, no, I wish it, something that I noticed when I I've talked about it before. Like, I'm just rehashing my old crap here. But like, when I managed to walk to the shop, yeah, like that transpired that i could then walk elsewhere it didn't just mean i could just walk to my shop now right. it meant if, if i went somewhere else i could walk in another direction it didn't just mean that i could only now walk to the shop so if you drive and you go on a freeway somewhere yeah like the more that you do that you can go freaking anywhere you just expand you get used to the sensations that you're not going to experience or maybe you do but it doesn't matter that's exactly you know right I mean? yeah yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly right. As you build each experience, it becomes cumulative. So yeah, yeah. when you get really you, good at driving, you use better words than me. I just yeah. <laughs> <He's> educated. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sm- I'm very smart. Um, <laughs> so if you're having a hard time, if the best you could do is two or three miles away from home, when you expand that to five miles, it becomes way easier to get to ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and if you're using kilometers, I don't know what to tell you. Just, I've just thought of something else. Yeah. I don't like being a passenger. Ah, that is interesting. We have seen no comments about that. So if you are not the driver, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. You know, I'm trying to think about this. Like, I think I think I I have a friend like that. I think the thing for me is because when I'm driving, I'm concentrating, I'm focused, and I've got like an objective. I'm in control of this. It's not like I'm scared of crashing or anything like that. It's just right. Maybe it's a boredom thing, or I've just got, you know, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do? I need one of them Fisher Price steering wheels. (laughs) (laughs) I am so buying you one of those for Christmas. (laughs) With the little rubber horn. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. You stick it on the dashboard. I'd be fine with that. You pretend you're driving too. Yeah, yeah. You're a gamer. Bring like problem solved, man. Problem solved. Look. Bring your like handheld console. But you know, it's. (sighs) I'm thinking like, there have been people. Poor Gemma. We keep talking about Gemma, but, mm-hmm. but like, you know, Gemma's done a lot of her, I don't think she's necessarily driving. Gem, you could comment if you want when you read this, but um, I know she's, she's getting in the car, but mm-hmm. I don't know if she's the one actually driving it. And that might be for other reasons. But I don't think so. Cause she gets taxis. That's it. That's what it is. So, um, but I, I, I think I have a friend of mine, a very old, old friend who he's not old. Well, I'm old. So that means he's old, but yeah. a long time friend who is the same thing. he, and it's not a, a panic and anxiety thing, but he does not like to be the passenger in the car. Never has yeah. as long as I know him. So that's a, that's probably a thing. That's it, then. So let's try and I know people need more, more nuts and bolts. So they're hoping for more nuts and bolts. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you the, come on, I'm going to give you the breakdown. You I'll just sit here looking pretty. That's good. Just, just <laughs> you're looking cool with the vaping thing. I might have to get a pan after this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm blowing it towards the camera. This is <laughs> like 3d. The yeah, next yeah. episode will be in 3d. We'll give you yeah, glasses. Yeah. That's it. So I, I think, um, Nuts and bolts here. And this applies to no matter what the situation is, whether it's just getting out of the house and into the car or stretching your distance or getting on the freeway or a country road, whatever it is in the car that you have a problem with, the technique is always exactly the same. First mm-hmm. of all, you have to acknowledge that, yeah, you're probably going to freaking hate doing it because it's, it's going to be very scary and uncomfortable the first time you start to stretch those boundaries. So if you haven't been in the car for a year, and you're going to start driving, you're going to be really scared. So first of all, the answer, the first thing you have to do, and this will go through all of our how-to videos, is just, that's, there's no other way around that. So if you're asking, you know, like, what, but I'm, you know, I'm terrified to do it, that's not a question. You're just making a statement, and yes. So my answer to that is, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't have a, I don't have a Me better too. answer than that. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. Everybody was scared. So yes, you're going to be scared. You're going to, it's going to be really hard and it's going to be terrifying and uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So understand that first. The second thing is you just have to break it down into tiny little things. So what I did was as I started to expand my radius, I would get in the car every morning and we've talked about this. So yeah, um, yeah. you know, I get in the car. The first thing I would do when I woke up, I wouldn't lay in bed. I would get up, get dressed. It was in the middle of the winter. It sucked. It was cold and snowy. But I would just get in the car and start driving around my neighborhood. And some mornings, I would just drive around my neighborhood, literally not going more than three or four blocks away. Like, it Mm -hmm. wasn't far. But I promised myself I would get into a routine of as calmly as possible and confidently as possible getting out the door and in the car and driving away to start Mm -hmm. that pace. And then I would just drive not for distance, but for time. And if I got in the car, drove away and, and I, and I j- gauge my anxiety at a, like a level seven, for instance, at a 10, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would say, okay, I'm not going to end this until it's a five. It didn't have to go away. I would just, until I'm starting to 
you know, feel better, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. I, then I would end it. Um, and that would start taking within that little two, three, four, five block radius, that started taking shorter and shorter time. Mm-hmm. So I would just get in the car, drive away and find myself three, four blocks away. I'm like, I, I feel okay. This is now normal. And yeah. that was my cue to say, now I have to start driving further. Um, and then I would just add another half a mile. Mm-hmm. And the first time I'd break out of that little radius and, you know, make that right turn and go down a, a road that, you know, I normally didn't go down. It mm-hmm. would be like, you know, boom, the anxiety would spike right up or I might panic a little bit. And I would just I say, okay, well now I just have to drive this road. I remember seeing your videos like, and then you started working on stop signs and doing a right turn or yep, yep. <laughs> right turn. I don't even No, yeah. it, it was true. It was, it yeah, was yeah. You, you really broke it down. Yeah. It, it was truly as like boring and mundane as that. There was no like, you know, the sky didn't open in one day. It's like I faced it and accepted it and bam, I was driving all over the place. That wasn't the way it was. I, I literally said, okay, now I'm going to drive down this street. I'm going to do the all mile and a half down to yeah, yeah. there's a main road that i live by it's it's a it's pretty big it's like three three lanes each direction and with a median mm-hmm. and the whole nine yards and that's about a mile mile and a half or so from my house and i would get to that and now it was the moment of truth so if i turned one way i had a faster path home if i turned the other that's way right. i remember that. i was committed to a much longer drive yeah, yeah, yeah. and i'm going to say it took me a few weeks to get to the point where i would get to that that light that traffic signal and have to make that decision and mm-hmm okay, I'm going to go right. And it was a right turn. Like, uh Oh, here we go. Cause the right turn was a longer way home. And it was also heading toward, you know, another problem spot for me, which was heading to yeah. my own office, which was only three, three miles away. I think the, the important takeaway there is that you just said it took you a few weeks to get to that point. It did. I think people expect too much, don't they? That's what I see from like, they go and do one thing, think, okay, I, I didn't freak out. And then they'll go try something else. And then it just becomes a motivation thing when you just, yeah. You, have a ba- you have a bad experience and you think, this ain't working for me. Right. right. What happened? I was, I, I was doing yeah, so yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. You, you hear people say it or, or they do that thing like, well I, well, I decided to accept it. I'm accepting my anxiety. So mm-hmm. why do I still feel badly? Like, well, that means you didn't really accept it because accept it, you have to feel badly. And yes, the time yeah, yeah. frame. Like mm-hmm. I was up and out every morning driving and, and as often as I could during the day, like mm-hmm. I would repeat that over and over and over. So you just have to take little tiny steps, pick the next thing that's making you nervous or anxious. And then mm-hmm. now you're going to have to do that. So basically you build, you build a skill that, that you could do without any problem for the most part, without being afraid or anticipating or be anxious. Mm-hmm. And the bad news is unless you can live your life with just that one little thing, like, like yeah. I can drive two miles and, and home. If you're okay mm-hmm. with that, you're done. But if you, really want to keep going and like yeah, yeah. live life, you know, the way you really want to do it. You're going to have to say, well, now I'm really comfortable with this. Now I'm going to have to go be uncomfortable again mm-hmm. and go further or get on the freeway or, or go to that, down that country road, but you're doing it in small little things. It doesn't mean if you're afraid to get on the freeway, it doesn't mean that you get on the freeway and drive a hundred miles, you know, 60 kilometers on the freeway. You don't do that. With you drive down. And- right. You, you, yeah. you know, like sometimes people misinterpret this stuff. Like, yes, you just decide today I'm going to accept my anxiety yeah, and yeah. drive a hundred yeah. miles. No, it doesn't yeah. work that way. No, exactly. It's hard work. You do one exit, then you do two exits. And when you could do one exit, like where I live, I could get on the Long Island Expressway and do one exit and it's probably like two miles. The exits wow. are reasonably close together. And I, and I could do that one and then think like, and I remember doing that. Like, okay, I'm going to do one. I'm going to go from exit, this exit to that exit. And I would get yeah. off and then go on, you know, around and then back the other way. Mm-hmm. So I'm just basically do the one exit loop. And then I remember being like, oh, I could do this now. And the time I decided to do the second exit, it sucked. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, you know, but, by, but when you do one exit, then two exits by the third exit, that becomes easier. Mm-hmm. By the time I was up to four and five exits on the expressway, it was just. Yeah. Yeah. What difference is five six exits or seven? a hundred miles didn't matter. Exactly. Now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when when I first split from my ex, like a few months back, my little and wanted to go to Birmingham. Like that's okay. the big that's the biggest city near me. Sure, and I had to take her there. It was like early morning, and all I was thinking like I haven't drove that far for ages, haven't experienced the traffic in that, but it was just <laughs> the same as me driving anywhere else. Nothing any different. Didn't matter, right? Here's an interesting one for you. I've just thought yeah. of something else. Sure, I'm just firing them at you. Like, <laughs> Where's the difference between me driving to McDonald's, right? right. I, can, I can drive to McDonald's fine. Right. I'm not, con- not condoning the use of McDonald's. <laughs> but put me in the queue at the drive-thru and yeah. I can't escape. 
then I have negative thoughts. Well, because you can't escape. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Correct. But I'm still in the same freaking piece of metal, in the same seat. I'm still in control of the vehicle. It's just crazy how you can interpret, like, put the car there, yeah. and you're all right. Stick it in that queue. You I'm going to say that there's probably, some of that has to do, I think, with, there's a, everybody has an ultimate safety zone, right? Everybody yeah. does, where, where you feel the safest. Mm-hmm. So even though maybe you'll have a panic attack at home, what has, what has always been your best safety zone? It's usually home. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. And for, for some people, it's actually literally one room in their home. Yeah, yeah. So I think the, the drive-through, a, re- a lot of people have driving problems because of the stopping. They get yep. a traffic signal and it's, it's yeah, a yeah. if they're in traffic, they can't move. They're, the drive-through at the mm-hmm. you know, McDonald's or the bank, same problems. And it's because now you can't. Not that you are thinking specifically yeah, yeah. like, oh, I need to get back yeah. home. You're not. Mm-hmm. But you know that if for some reason right this minute I had to like – that's like, it's crazy. Stomp on the gas and head yeah. to home. You know that you can't, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's probably the issue. It's, oh, it's yeah. It's definitely yeah. It's yeah. Not being able to escape. Not being able to. Not escape. that I've ever had to escape. Right. I've always made right. it around the frigging thing. Although once I did pull up at the first window pay and then just drive off before right. collecting my food, but I didn't do it because I was anxious. I did it because I, my head was up my own ass. Some uh, lucky SOB went up getting like a free cheeseburger that day. Yeah. And a Big Mac. Not too shabby. Yeah. That worked yeah. out for them then. I, I well, bet that there were... The funny thing was I had to go around again. So if I was feeling nervous, <laughs> I, I'd do it again. You That's made the moral worse. of the story. You made it worse for yourself. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah, do it again. That's true. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, that's actually a good point. The red lights, the traffic jams, people getting there like, what if I get stuck in traffic? I'll be mm-hmm. stuck like in the place I don't want to be. And yeah, the yeah. answer is, mm-hmm. So, exactly. And people, yeah. will, people will go out of their way to avoid busier roads. Like they'll go the long way around because it's yeah. going to be quieter just because they don't want to get caught in that traffic. That's true. I, would, I used to do that. Mm. And I think if you're working on this stuff, like, you know, driving is a problem, specific things about driving. It's okay in the beginning to engineer that practice so that you don't wind up, you know, stop dead in rush hour gridlock. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Like you don't have to go like, okay, I have to tackle this. So let me go right into the midtown tunnel heading into New York city at five mm-hmm. o'clock. Like mm-hmm. don't do that. So when you get more comfortable, because the, the, the object of the game is the worst driving situation. I'm either far from home. I'm on a deserted road or I'm on a highway or I'm in traffic. First, you have to be okay being in the car and just driving it, you know? Mm-hmm. And when you understand that, like, well, just cause I'm in the car doesn't make me any less safe than anywhere else then you're ready to say, well, I might hit some traffic or red lights or I'll go through the drive through at the bank or, yeah. or to get some food. But um, it's okay to work up to those things. In mm-hmm. fact, you almost have to. I think that's the key. I, think, I honestly think that's, that's what I've been doing like this last week, just small, yeah. small increments sure. until, until you reach those points because it's important to feel the anxiety, obviously. Yep. There's no point doing stuff if it's not going to bring anything on. Right. But don't, right. But don't go overboard because that's when, for me personally, that's when I've lost the momentum it makes you start questioning your own courage whether it's worth doing it but obviously right. it's worth doing it yeah yeah that's when it gets like I, we know that it's supposed to be hard it's never going to be easy right but you can you can do too much it it is true and i think that speaks to motivation and yeah, yeah. you know people expect expectations motivation mm-hmm. what you think your what your goals are um mm-hmm. But as far as driving, I think um, to express a couple of, I mean, we had a few people on, on Facebook group who did ask some questions. So uh, we'll, we can address those, but the answers are always going to be the same um, mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. the most part. Sabrina's judging us, by the way. Um, yes. Laura asked, what do I do when I get back in the car to start driving alone again and start to feel panicky and, and derealization? I'm going to answer mm-hmm. that. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Right. Exactly. So Laura, I think the, the answer to that is know that that is exactly going to happen. Mm-hmm. So asking the question, yeah, but what do I do if I panic in the car? Like panic, mm, you know, like panic in the car. You have to panic in the car. Yeah, yeah. We need you to do that. So, um, as she mentions oh, yeah. also like, what about, what about if the kids are in the car? She doesn't want them to know that she's panicking. And I, and I, I totally understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm also trying to hide it from them while feeling like I'm going crazy. And to top it off, the boys are so loud in the car, which makes the panic so much worse. So there's a couple of things going on there. And I'm, and I'm guessing a few people will be able to relate to Laura's question. So first of all, what, what happens? What do you do? You do nothing. You just, 
if you have to pull over, pull over, right? That's just what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. I've done that in the past. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be, you got to be safe. So it's okay. So, and that's if you are at the point where just the act of getting in the car by yourself is going to send you into a panic. Well, don't jump on the freeway. Like, just keep it yeah, local, yeah. you know, yeah. on lightly trafficked roads so that when you panic or you start to feel that, you can just pull over and let it be. But mm -hmm. What I said earlier, where I used to go out and drive until I could feel my anxiety subside, and I would have all of those symptoms. But the worst one was the derealization and the and the feeling of being just slightly dizzy. But yeah. I had to realize, like, I'm not really dizzy here. If I was dizzy, I wouldn't have drove the car. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm not silly. But understanding what it really was, and I would have to just let those be there, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, until they would start to go away. So. What do you do? Pull over if you have to. If you're able yeah. to and you have to judge that, just keep driving. Just keep it slow and deliberate and, you know, don't, don't go into like high speed mode and, you, and you're doing the same things that you would if you're having a panic attack in the supermarket. No, oh my God, no what if, no yeah. inner dialogue, none of those things. You just have to kind of just let them happen and, 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 and do it and do it yeah, while I've, you are. Yeah. I've done, I've done that on the motorway where I've just slowed down. Yeah, I can feel, feel myself getting edgy. So just slow down, chill. Sure, just, there's no there's no harm in that. There's yeah, a, yeah. It's in a race. You don't have to get where you're going really fast. Yeah, yeah. And as far as hiding it from the kids when you're driving, I think that what happens a lot of people ask, you know, when the kids are in the car, well, what if I something bad happens to me and and I crash and something happens to my kids? Mm -hmm. Well, nothing. You nothing bad ever happens, right? So you never yeah, pass yeah. out. You never go crazy. You never lose your mind. You never have a heart attack. You never have a stroke. You never have those things happen. So I would think if you're at the stage where, so the asking the question, what if, what if I have a panic attack in the car and something happens to my kids? That's not a, that's not a question you should really yeah, be asking. Yeah. You're still believing that something bad is going to happen because of Nothing, anxiety. Nothing's going to happen to the kids if you have a panic attack. That's, that's exactly true. I mean, I have panic in front of my kids. In the, yeah. If it ever happened in the car, it's, I think it may have happened in the car. But two things, like number one, and you always have the ability to pull over. But again, maybe work on this stuff without the kids in the car initially. That's, so yeah, if yeah. you're going to have five alarm panic in the car, then have it. Just if you possibly can, just do it alone. Yeah. You know, but that means if you have to get up a little earlier or you got to enlist the aid of your husband or your partner, whoever it is, Laura, or whoever's talking and you know, is watching, take care of the kids so that you can drive alone every single day for a few minutes just to get better at that. Then mm -hmm. that's kind of what you're going to have to try to do. But or even, if, it, if, it, if it is having the kids in the car, that's maybe assisting the triggering of it and yeah. just do it, start the process again, but just keep right. it local again. Don't, right. don't be going to try and that's exactly try. right. So yeah. if it's just being in the car freaks you out, you got to be in the car alone first to freak out. And then you got to add the kids into the equation and let mm -hmm. and like Billy said, just then scale it back, keep it local again. Mm -hmm. the, you can't, there's no way, look, it is what it is. We have to do this work to situate, Laura, you're in that situation. You, you're not, you can't imagine, you can't snap your fingers and get out of it. So unfortunately the kids are going to have to be involved in at some point. There's no quick fix. No. And I think even if they do to, to address the thing of what if they see, I don't want them to see me panicking. Mm. You know, I, I would almost suggest that everybody, maybe not while driving, cause that's not always safe, but you know, we've talked about this before. Did you ever take it? Did you ever look at your old videos when you're in a panic or really high anxiety? Oh, yes. And look back and say, okay, well, I could see that I was tugging on my ear. I was doing this. But otherwise, I don't look like I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you never looked. You know, well, like, all look at the last week's live stream. Like, I right. was freaking right. out big time. Who would know? Nobody. I mean, we if might had, know because we're, that's what the topic is. But if I hadn't have said anything, nobody would have known. I don't know. Probably would have never known. Mm. You know, so I think that's that thing where, I, you know, we're overestimating what a panic attack looks yeah, like yeah. to the outside world. It doesn't uh -huh. look like that at all. I mean, unless you're literally just dropped to your knees and you're screaming bloody murder. Well, it makes me, it makes me smile when you're doing your walking, when you're out walking, you're doing a live and somebody says, what would you do if you had a panic attack now? And you always say, well, you don't know that I'm not. Oh yeah. That was just recently. I did. I was, yeah, in the, yeah, yeah. I was on that little hike. I, and could, I, did that. I could be panicking right now. Right. I would just do exactly what I'm doing now. I might be, yeah, yeah. I might be panicking right this minute. You would, you don't exactly. know. That. Exactly. So I think the kids are not going to, you have to get over that too. You're giving, again, that's catastrophizing. You're thinking, mm -hmm. you know, this is going to look horrible. I'm going to be out of control. And that's not really the way it is. And the odds are the kids aren't even going to know that you're in a yeah. panic. So, so you're all good. You know, the fact that the kids are loud, you just have to desensitize yourself to that. There's no good way around that. You just yeah. got to work. So let's, let's take another one real quick. So, um, well, Molly asked a different question. Um, this is a different Laura. Let, let's go back to Molly's question because it's, it's, 
not really a driving question, but related. So Laura, a different Laura who asked, um, I'd love to hear advice on breaking the habit of avoidance. We could talk about this in every video. Mm -hmm. Relating it to driving. The psychology that has me planning recovery and the next thing I know, I'm renovating the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of brilliant in a way that she recognizes that. Yeah, yeah. You want to take that one? Have you found yourself ever doing that? Of course. Avoiding. I'm the master of avoidance. That's what this is all about, in a way. <laughs> like, it really is. It really yeah. is. Yeah. The more you avoid, the more you reinforce that you're in danger. Right. You sound like me, dude. Sorry. I've been watching too many of you. <laughs> That's okay. That's true though. It's exactly true. So Laura, like avoidance is the key of every the key to everything. Like that's how agoraphobia happens too. Mm -hmm. You avoid one thing and then another thing and then another thing and another thing. And next thing you're avoiding everything and you're stuck. You know? And the problem the problem then becomes that you just anticipate stuff so much more. Right. That's what I've been doing. Like the, the two walks that I've done last week, I didn't I didn't really anticipate them that much. But I've been avoiding doing them. So it just made it more of an issue than it actually was. And me going and doing it and filming it and nothing happening, that right. proved, it proved that it was more of an issue in my head than it actually was me going and doing the fucking stuff. Yeah. So, so you know, how do you get around that? I mean, we're talking about driving in this one, but this applies to driving and everything else. Breaking the habit of avoidance. I, I don't have a good magic trick to do it. You just yeah, have to yeah. decide uh, today I'm going to do it. It's good that you understand what you're doing, mm -hmm. but that's... That's a question that almost anybody, whether they're dealing with panic and anxiety, can can ask themselves almost any time. That's a discipline and a decision making. Like I really, I I need to like you know whatever. I need to do my homework, but I really want to play Xbox instead. Like yeah, yeah. People people deal with that. So you just you just have to decide like this is going to suck, but I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to get in the car and start working on this stuff. So Laura, that's the best answer I think we can give you. And the last one was Molly. Sorry. It's okay. You do what you got to do. Um, kids. kids. That's crazy. She wants, she, incidentally, she wants me to go and pick her up, which means I've got to go in the car, but it means I've got to go to the fuel station first because I haven't got any. <laughs> Coincidentally, I have to get in the car. Brilliant. You're not worried about that though? You're worried about the fuel station? Mm, it's not too bad. It's not as much of an issue now because I have to do it. That's a big difference for me now, you see. Uh, Whereas before when I was with her, yeah. I could get out of doing stuff. Whereas now, it's all on me. But it's a yeah, good thing. It's a good yeah. thing. And so it's forced you to do that. And now, yeah, yeah. now it's not no, that big No thing. more avoidance. Yeah. Right. Right. You were forced to not avoid. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. So Molly says, how do I go to the doctors without freaking out? I have health anxiety. I do not avoid them. But when I go, I'm really nervous for a good week before I'm even there. So uh, I'm going to say that this is a question about anticipation, which is just like avoidance. Anticipation and avoidance are the same really like almost the same issue. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you know that you have to do something, whether it's getting in the car and starting to like practice driving again or going to the doctors or whatever it is that is problematic for you. And you think about it and you think about it and you try and predict the future. It's going to be terrible. Yeah. I'm going to panic. I'm going to do this. Right. This is going to happen. I'm going to pass out. I'm going to whatever. And so you, you're scared about it before you even do it. And then you don't do it. So that's yeah, uh, yeah. anticipation leads to avoidance. The best answer I have for, for that, and, uh, that question, Molly, is you have to learn. That's the cognitive part of this. Like, it's not all exposure. It's, there's also, you have to work on being able to, you know, disengage that inner dialogue mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. let thoughts come and go. And, you know, I did the meditation thing with Susan. I'll be working on that. That helps. It's a skill. Mm -hmm. And you just... There's, there's that, you have to learn that skill of being able to like dismiss those irrational thoughts and mm -hmm. understand like, well, right now I'm worried about going. So Molly, for instance, she has to go to the doctor, say next week, she's already freaking out over it. You have to be able to say like, I'm freaking out over going to a doctor appointment next week. That is not here. Like the only moment you actually have is the one you have right now. Yeah, yeah. So there's mindfulness, there's, there's mental focus, there's the, the ability to understand what those thoughts are and say, well, this is one of those thoughts that I is problematic for me. So I need to either replace it, challenge it, take it down, you know, be mm -hmm. more mindful. There's a million different things that go into that. Just had to do a little selective editing. Apologies. It's okay. It happens. No big deal. 
So I think we've covered pretty much. I mean, there was only a couple of questions on on the Facebook group about this. Yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't really give didn't people give them a lot of notice. Of, I, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll try and do that better next time. That's okay. So I think um, we'll end as we always do. So if you're watching this video, it's going to be on my YouTube channel. Freaking yes. subscribe, man. I need like 80 of you to do it. Just click the button. Mental health, man. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, share the video comments here, comments, and if it will put a link to the Facebook group, you got to, you got to join the Facebook group, even if you hate Facebook, it's, it's growing, it's growing and it's just a good group of people. Well, most a lot of, of the discussion happens there. Most of the viewers of my stream are from the group. To be fair. I get a good. few stragglers drop in now and again, but I, we got about another week or two. We're going to hit a thousand people. Yeah. 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 I'm amazed. I was amazed when we got to 50. It was like mm -hmm. you, me and mm -hmm. like two other people. Mm -hmm. like, all right, here's our group. And it was all, it was all coming off that first bunch of podcasts where we did because that was why we set the group up in the first place that's remember right. that's right when we was talking about exposure yep and it worked out really well so yeah, yeah. Um, yeah join the facebook group and you know subscribe to the channel comment wherever you want what's your website bill anxietyunited.com but don't bother going there it's a load of crap follow me YouTube. on no yeah youtube's where it's at youtube.com slash anxiety united that's the one we'll link billy's yeah. channel in the description yeah, it's fine. To totally fine. It's and Thanksgiving it. this week. What are you doing? Thanksgiving, yes. Next Celebrations. week. Celebrations. We have today is Saturday. So yes, American Thanksgiving. Do you guys have Thanksgiving yeah. some kind, don't you? Do you have one of those? No. Canadians do it. We don't. We do you have Boxing look. Day. We have Boxing Day. We have Bonfire Night as well, which I learned recently that you don't have. I have never heard of this. What is yeah. that? So basically, <laughs> let's give some... Let's, this is come good. on. Share the English tradition. Basically, yeah. Guy Fawkes, years ago, that's how good my history knowledge is, years ago. Years tried ago. To, you tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament, basically. Wow. So every, every year on the 5th of November, people let off fireworks and set, light bonfires. No kidding. Yeah, man. We celebrate terrorism in this country. I love it. You guys are <laughs> badass. This is why the sun never set on the British Crazy, Empire for so long. Yeah. Holy we try to blow everybody up. Parliament, and we, like, we celebrate that. Remember when that guy yeah. tried to blow up our entire system yeah. of government? Brilliant. Awesome. Let's have a Celebrate. barbecue. <laughs> I think we all wind up doing that stuff. Like next we, week. You know. Next week is Bin Laden Day, yeah? No. Bin Laden, yeah, right. Well, I, a big, you know, it's a whole different thing. I assume people are this <laughs> I'm sorry. Thing. It's okay. But we have, here, here we have a big debate. Every time there's a new thing, like the 9-11, the of, of course, a big uh -huh. Uh -huh. But a lot of people say like, well, that should be a, you know, we should call it a holiday here in the U.S. And maybe uh -huh. we should. I don't, I don't know what my views are on that. But, but a lot of people say, yeah, we'll call it a holiday. And in within 30 years, it'll just be like a hot dogs and hamburgers day. Yeah, it's fireworks. Cool. And yeah, like you forget why. Cotton candy. Yeah. So who knows? But wow. Guy uh, Fawkes. Guy Fawkes, bonfire night. Bonfire Release night. It. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to have, we have Thanksgiving on Thursday. So are you going to stream on Thursday? I am, but it's just going to be me and a couple of English people, I reckon. <laughs> be me, Gemma, Steph. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it'd be fine. Charlene. Yeah. Charlene yeah, would, Charlene's Scottish, I think. I love the way that, for some reason, the stream... Well, we're going way off topic here, but yeah, let's, right. we'll just finish with a bit of... Sure. That's the stream, that even when people are calling now, they're saying, oh, I wanted to put one in for the Americans. It's just, it makes me laugh. <laughs> new call. I had a new call on Thursday. and was like, oh, I couldn't let the, the English... <laughs> Pull away with this. I'm like, there was that, that friendly rivalry. That's yeah, good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's like sibling healthy, rivalry. Healthy. It is healthy. It's healthy. It pushes us all forward. Exactly. So in a way, we're really just moving the human race forward is what you and I are doing here. That's it. That's what it's all about. Was there any, any, ever any doubt about that? <laughs> so what, do you th what should our next topic be? How do I... What do you think? You guys feel free to like add suggestions. Yeah, yeah. Give us some comments and let us know what you think. I don't know. We'll try and do these once a week if possible. Like, so a big thing for me has always been going out for dinner. That's something that's oh, always that's bothered me. One. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, social situations, out to eat, mm -hmm. parties. Mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. should be our next one. Let's do it. Yeah, you'll have a lot more to add than I will on that. So well, I'll, be in, I'll, I'll do that one from in a restaurant. How's that? Oh, that would be... <laughs> <laughs> just set up the camera and stuff, sitting at a table, yeah, yeah. eating ribs. That's, yeah. that's good. That's good. Spilling gravy. Yeah, that'll be the next one we should do. How do I go out to eat or go into social situations like that? I think it's yeah, good. Yeah. So, all right, folks. Thanks for hanging around. I don't know how long yeah. we've gone. Probably half hour. Let's hope people enjoy this. It's I just been, Like, we're out of practice doing this stuff, man. It's been, we are. It was a little rough getting started after a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all right. Because part of the problem here, you and I, is we just do no show. We have no prep. 
I'll send you a picture of just like the ridiculous Rube Goldberg of wires that I had. just the technical problems Billy, I had. Billy didn't have any problems. He was ready. Like, I've been I'm sitting tech, here. I own technology business. <laughs> I'm surrounded by cloud computing and like all that kind of stuff. And I could not get like Skype to work. Oh my and I've been sitting here for three hours eating pizza. <laughs> just like waiting. <laughs> I have been just running cables. I'm standing on top of cables now. I'll send you a picture. And like oh Billy's just God. been easing his pain with pizza while he waits. <laughs> We're not, we are not professional in any way. We should be better at this. Yeah, we're getting there, mate. We're getting there. We will. It's fine. Winging it works out good. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Good luck.